All right, welcome to another video. So today we're gonna answer some questions from my friends on Instagram, and I'm very excited to answer the questions for them. So let's get right to it. So the first question is about long exposure. She said, how do I do a long exposure shot? So a long exposure shot is used in different ways. One is to capture motion, to capture lights. It can also be used to capture the stars in the starry, starry night. <laughs> One thing you can do with long exposure shot is to focus on your shutter speed. The ISO and your aperture come second. So the thing about long exposure shot is that you want your shutter to be open for longer periods of time. Usually we would take photos with one one hundredth of a second and above, but for longer exposures, like um, a long exposure shot, we want our shutter speed to be open for at least five seconds. For example, you want to take a photo of the stars at night. I would suggest starting with 10 seconds for your shutter speed and a wide open aperture. And I would say leave your ISO around 100 or 200. Now you might be thinking, why would I leave my ISO around 100 or 200 when it's super dark? Well, it's because you're compensating with your shutter speed. Even though you have a lower ISO, you have a wide open aperture and a long sh longer shutter speed that compensates for, for the lack of ISO that you have. So one thing you can do to do long exposure uh, photography is to, to use a longer shutter speed, meaning everything above five seconds. Um, you can even do 30 seconds if you want. So that's one way where you can start uh, long exposure photography. So the next question is, what can you do to train your eyes for photography? They say that the best camera is the one you have. And I agree with that. One way you can train your eyes for photography is to take your camera wherever you go, take photos, no matter how bad or how good it looks. For example, you're out and about, you're in the street, you saw a bird that you wanna take a photo of, then take a photo. The more you take photos, the more you feel more comfortable in, in photography, basically. Photography takes practice. It doesn't come overnight. It doesn't, you don't get good at photography overnight. It takes practice. And you'll be taking photos that aren't that good enough. You are gonna take photos that are blurry, shaky, but the more you take photos, no matter how, like I said, good or bad it looks for you, you're training yourself to become a better photographer someday. So I would say that's one thing you can do to train your eyes for photography. Just keep taking photos. Just go out, take photos of the flowers, the road, the sky. Keep on practicing. That's one way you can train your eyes for photography. Now, there is another question, but this is about filmmaking. As some of you may know, I stopped doing photography for a while to focus on um, filmmaking. And the question is, have you made any short films? Yes, I remember my first short film was in the Philippines. I made it with my classmates. Uh, when I was studying in the Philippines, my classmate and I, classmates and I joined a filmmaking contest. So the thing is that I don't have a lot of experience with filmmaking back then. This was 2018 and my classmate and um, his girlfriend are, let's say, experienced about filmmaking. So I was like, I want to help you direct it. So there's three of us directing this film, and it's about a guy who got lucky because he doesn't have a resume. Uh, I'm gonna try to find the video and try to post it here, but, but yeah, that was one of our films. And just a few months ago, I did a documentary about the Waimea Valley here in Hawaii. And in the future, I'm planning to do more documentaries and short films about my life here in Hawaii and um, create a film about uh, the Philippines, which is my culture. Okay, so for our last question, I, I saved this one for the last because I think this is the best question. And she asked, so in a camera, there are TV, AV, M, etc. settings. Which one is best suited for which? So we have TV, which is for stands for timer value. This is where you're focused on the shutter speed, meaning once you set the shutter speed, your camera will do the rest with the ISO and the aperture, meaning the aperture and the ISO will be automatically set by your camera. 
And then we have AV, which is focused on aperture or the aperture value. This is the part where you manually set the aperture and then just like the TV, your camera will automatically set the shutter speed and the ISO. There are a lot of uses for TV and AV. I would say personally, the time where I would use TV is when I'm focusing on capturing motion. For example, I wanna take photos of cars passing by the highway, stars, light painting, anything that would, you wanna show motion, so to speak. So with AV, with aperture value or aperture priority in some cameras, if I wanna take a, a group photo and it's a big group, I would want the aperture to be closed so that the depth of, depth of field is enough for a big group. It depends on what you wanna shoot. There's no specific mode or event where you're gonna use all of them. But personally, I would suggest learning about the manual mode of your camera. Once you're able to learn about the manual mode of your camera, you'll be able to adjust the settings based on the event that you're shooting. And actually, I have a YouTube video here where I created for you guys. So you can learn about the manual mode in your camera. Thank you for watching this video. That's all for our questions for today. If you have any more questions about photography or videos, I will do my best to answer them. I'm not a professional, I'm still learning. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.